guys, I'm Eliza Wood, this is my channel, and let's talk about balls. The dancing kind, y'all. I'm watching you. So it's February, and if you watched my last couple of videos, you'll know that I'm trying to do a resolution of one project per month. You would think February, Valentine's Day, obviously. And you would be wrong. I am going to a ball literally March 1st. I'm getting on a plane to go to a ball on the 2nd. So I need a dress for that. The theme of the ball is Moon and Myth by Feta Dufe. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, uh, but they do have an Instagram channel that I will be posting below just so you know what I'm talking about. So of course I have to make a moon themed ball gown and I actually that is not really my aesthetic as you can see I am a very pink bright flowery kind of person so moon and nighttime mm, not quite my scene but ball gowns are I've already made one at least with some success it was the Cinderella ball gown um, and now I need to design and make myself a ball gown for the moon and myth ball. Now I do have to say that I filmed the intro late. Again, it's actually the 14th of February. So I have been working on it uh, since I got back from MegaCon, but this is also the short month. So I am, I put a lot on myself this time. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. This time I did not have a clear picture. Like I didn't have, something I was copying, like for cosplay. I really wanted to design something of my own, um, which honestly, I'm not that great at. I am great at copying things. I can figure out how to make a dress from a picture, but coming up with something on my own, I've never been amazing at it. So I headed off to Pinterest and looked up a whole bunch of ball gowns, designs and things. Here's a few of them. Unfortunately, on Pinterest, I did try to click the link to go to the original poster, but it kept taking me to this uh, craziest wedding gown kind of um, thing. So if you know whose dresses these are, please let me know and I will put them in the description. But as of right now, I do not know who these belong to. They were really my inspiration for making something of my own. Cause again, I don't want to copy these dresses. I want to make something of my own. I was also on Amazon looking at halo crowns, which I love, but I haven't had great luck with. The one that I've gotten before I broke immediately, <laughs> but it, it was perfect for the dress. So based on these things, I am envisioning kind of space, Milky Way. I'm thinking the Victorian kind of ball gowns where they have kind of a more flat front. Like it does stick out a little bit. There's a bit of volume in the front, but it's more towards the back. Um, I just think the more sleek look would be better for this, but just giving the wide expanse of space in the back. And then I think what I wanna do is make a base dress with blue material, dark blue material, um, hopefully with a bit of shine or sparkle to it that'll give kind of a starry feel. And then an overpiece with some color changing, whether that's an iridescent fabric or a layer of a couple different colored fabrics where you can see uh, a kind of changing effect between like blacks and blues and purples and that kind of thing to give that galaxy feel. Hello sir. It seems my director has come to join us. And then what I really want to challenge myself with is lights in the gown. I want to put some lights down at the bottom around the hem of the overdress, not the underdress, just the overdress. And then I also kind of want to put some golden charms, if I can find some, in the actual, uh, the underdress, like not in it, on top of it. So like chains and things like necklaces kind of thing. I don't think that made any sense, but hopefully I'm getting the point of cross with, especially with my picture, which has been sitting up here and I have not actually mentioned it being there this whole time, but I'm sure you noticed. So now that we've got all that out of the way, we can move on to 
the actual making of, drafting and everything. Okie dokie, it is February 7th. My plan for today is to try to draft my bodice for the dress. I would really like to be able to cut the pattern pieces out. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um, it's not actually in the schedule that it needs to get done today, but I would really like to get it done today. But yeah, um, I don't have fabric yet for that project, but I have mock-up material and I gotta get started. Okay, so I was trying to decide between this skirt, which I used on Cinderella's dress and and this skirt, which I used on Evie's dress. Um, but I think that for the ball gown feel, both of these are actually evening dresses. One of them is from 1861 to 64, and the other one is from the 1890s. I'm thinking that for the sake of a ball gown, I just, I know I was looking for a more sleek kind of look with the skirt. But I feel like I like the poofier skirt. I'm just, in general, I prefer a poofy skirt. So I think I'm going to do this skirt. You can see there's already writing on it from when, this, when I was doing Cinderella. Um, so I'll have to redo that. But this is the skirt I'm going to go with. And then once I have this skirt made, I can then drape the overskirt on top of it. So that's my plan. So the first thing we're going to do is draft out my pattern. I'm just going to use the same patterning method that I used from the EV corset that I made in the last couple of videos. I'm really just pretty much copying that exactly. So if you want to know how exactly I did the math for this and all that, go ahead and check out that video. It'll be in the description box below. But for now, I'm just kind of doing some measurements, but a lot of it is very much a, eh, this looks like it's about the right kind of shape. At the top there, I just drew a line. This is going to be where I think all of my actual bust line is going to be, instead of that straight line, because at least historically, the patterns were actually done on the curve in order to take into account that your body is curved. Hello my dear executive producer. And then once I've drawn everything out, which I didn't think that you needed to see everything, since I wasn't really talking about it all that much anyway, I went ahead and cut everything out as well. Now, I actually didn't fully cut the pieces out. I left them connected where they were at the top. You see that bust there is actually connected at the top. Because I'm going to tape everything together and just look at the general shape of it to see if it actually looks good. Alright, now let's start on the mock-up. I believe this is Kona cotton. I usually get the widest width you can get at Joann's. And just whichever's cheaper, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be my mock-up fabric anyway. So I don't worry too much about getting any sort of color or anything. Just the cheapest I can get. I went ahead and copied my pattern piece. And when I draw these pattern pieces, I never actually give myself a seam allowance. It would make my life so much easier. But since I didn't do that, I have to trace out a half inch seam allowance. Um, that's more than is usual on a pre-made pattern. I just prefer to have some extra space in my seam allowances, especially on mock-ups, just in case something goes wrong. 
and maybe I can go ahead and fix it within the same allowance that I have. It's February 9th. Baron, you're blocking the view. It's February 9th, and I have just finished the first mock-up. Um, oh, it's bad. Like, really bad. The bottom, the waistline, and the part that should connect to the skirt looks just fine. That needs no alterations whatsoever. The top, I was gonna record trying on the, the first mock-up, but no. There's no way that I could put that on YouTube and not get in trouble. Cause, whoo, it was bad. Like, oh. So, I need to take out some of the overbust in the front. And then I also need to extend the sweetheart neckline a little farther into the side pieces because it was not far enough. I thought I had put it enough to the side, but I did not. So that's the plan. That's going to be the next steps. We're going to try that out. So I decided that I'm only going to adjust these four pieces. The back looked fine, so I'm actually not even going to recut those pieces out. For these four, I needed to take off a little bit at the top, which I did off camera apparently at that angle. And since all of my seams are changed by eye, I'm just going ahead and measuring them to make sure that they are going to be the same length in the end. And then for the side pieces, I'm going to fully retrace and redraw them because I could probably tape some piece on to the top just to change the top of it. But honestly, I think that's too much of a pain in the butt. I think it'll be easier just to redraw everything. So I've got my piece redrawn except for the top. I redid the waistline and the hip line. And now I'm measuring how high I want it to go for the seam to be the same. And then I had my second piece kind of held up against it so I could make the line straight, but honestly, after thinking about it, decided that probably wasn't the correct thing to do, so I added some extra height to that side. Now again, this is all by eye. I didn't do any measurements. And it's probably going to turn out not the best. But at this point, I kind of think that's just how I work. And then once again, I'm going to go ahead and pin everything down so I can redraw them onto my pieces. I probably could have just used the front of my original mock up and just added those little changes. But honestly, I did not feel like doing the work of ripping that out and having to fix it and then re-sewing it together. I'm already going to do that on the back, so I just thought it would be easier just to recut everything out, um, which unfortunately means I have to redo my half-inch seam on all of my pieces. So here's my first mock-up. I just need to pull the back off of it so I can attach the other side. You'll see there in the back I've got those um, grommets. That is actually just a thing from Joann's that's supposed to be a decorative detail. And I like to use it on the back of my mock-up corset so that I don't have to redo that grommet every single time. And this is why I also didn't want to remake my front pieces, I had to undo every single boning channel that I needed on these seams and then undo the seams. And then I'm going to sew everything back together once again, clip the edges, and then I will 
open the seams and sew them down to make myself some easy boning channels. So here's mock-up number two. I can actually show it because it's not indecent. There's still some things that needed to be fixed. I thought that my front hip area was okay, but now I can see that it's really gaping in the front. The back still looks fine, and then I had to make a few adjustments in the bust area that I've already pinned into place, but honestly, I'm thinking one more mock-up, and then it should be, as Rachel Maxey would say, good enough. Guess what, y'all? My headbands came in from a ball gown, and I thought that it would be a good time to go ahead and open them because I'm excited. All right. So, it's cheaper looking than I had hoped it would be. It'll work for the ball, but I'm a little disappointed in it. But it's okay. It's really pretty. I really like it. It's just that it's not what I had hoped it was going to be. So, it's okay. But I really like the dangly bits and I like the gold detail. And so this is going to be a lot of fun to wear. Although I'm going to have to leave it a little bit more comfortable around the base of my head. Because it is, oh my gosh, so uncomfortable right by my ears. But at least it's not falling over. And... Excited. Back to my very scientific willy-nilly, I'm going to take this much off the top. This time I am actually going to redo all the pieces because after doing the mock-up, I actually decided that I think it's a little too short for me. I have a long torso and I just, I think that I need to do a little bit extra, so I'm going to add... I decided on an inch, so I cut the pieces at my waistline mark, and then I added an inch. For the most part, I was kind of eyeing it as best I could to even it out, but some of the pieces, like the back, had to have a straight line at the back, so I made sure that lined up, and then on... The other side, I just kind of eyed a good curve to make sure that it fit. Now, I didn't want to waste all of my mock-up paper, so I just cut a little piece off, just the piece that I needed to extend my original. February 10th, this is the third mock-up that I've made today. And honestly, I am so tired of making this bodice, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm sure there's things that are messed up, but adding that inch to the waist was definitely the right move. It doesn't feel like it's too short or too high or anything like that. Um, I didn't wind up taking out these bits because I wasn't sure if adding the inch in the waist was going to make this sit a little lower and therefore need more space, but it looks like it does actually still need to be taken out a little bit. Um, but I did take out the bust, so that's fitting a lot better. Um, and it's fitting, it's lifted, which is what I really wanted, which is why I actually extended the waist. I wanted to lift, lift the girls just a little bit. So I think that I am happy with it. I think I'm just gonna move on to the bodice because I'm tired of remaking it. And then I gotta do it two more times because I have to make the lining and then also the bodice. So I will go ahead and maybe take out a little bit of probably the front three pieces. Maybe this piece, but I don't think so. I think it would sit weird if I did. But I am really happy with how it turned out. Now that we have our mock-ups, we can get on to working with the actual project. And it's already February 12th or 11th. Alexa, what is today's date? It's Monday, February 12th. Up next, would you like to wind down to relaxing fireplace sounds? Yes. The skill, fireplace monitors can help you with that. Did you want to enable it? No. 
So Alexa has spoken. It is February 12th. Um, and so I'm already halfway through the month and I haven't even actually started on the project. I've only done the mock-up, so I really gotta get rolling. But before I do, let's talk fabric. Most of it. And half of it. I don't know the rest. So I was going through my stash and I have this fabric. No idea what it is. Really don't know how much I have of it. Um, I can't find my flame wand right now, so can't even tell if it's polyester, though it probably is because I do not have the kind of money to get nice fabric that's not polyester. Um, so this is probably going to work as my lining. I don't even know what I got this for. There was definitely a reason. I never buy this much fabric without a reason, but I do not know what it was for. So I've just got random bits of fabric, but I need a stiffer fabric and this is a very stiff fabric for at least the lining of the corset. So that's this one. The actual gown is going to be this fabric. It's really hard to see in this lighting, but I love the shine of it. I'm actually for once gonna use the shiny side of fabric and it's really flowy, but it's not very strong, which is why I want I mean, it's got some stiffness to it, but I just don't feel like it'll survive a corset for very long. But it's this blue fabric with a little bit of a white shine on it that kind of gives the spacey vibe that I'm going for. Now, the only fabric that I'm missing, and I think I'm probably gonna have to order it, is the fabric for the overskirt. I haven't quite decided what I want for that fabric. I want it to give the Milky Way vibe, but... There's two ways of doing that. I went to Joann's to look at some fabric there, but I could not find the fabric that I was looking for. There's supposed to be this iridescent, somewhat sheer Casa fabric, but I could not find it at all. I was looking for ages and I did not find it. So I can go to another Joann's, but it's across a bridge that I don't particularly like crossing. So I'm kind of putting it off even though I really need to go get some. I'll do it eventually. Or I can order online um, when I was making the Cinderella dress. Something that I found out on the Cinderella dress is that they actually had a layer of three different colors of a sheer fabric that's like super expensive and I'm totally not gonna get. That was just layered on top of each other and it gave this kind of watercolory effect that it's really pretty and I really do enjoy it. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do that instead, just get, but the thing is, if I do that instead, rather than getting possibly six, seven yards of one fabric, I have to get six, seven yards of three fabrics. So I'm still trying to decide. For now, I want to go ahead and cut out my fabric pieces on, hopefully I'll be able to get the skirt as well as the bodice on the lining fabric. And then I should hopefully be able to get it all on this fabric as well. I'm kind of hoping I have enough of this fabric to do a base layer of the overskirt. And then I can layer a sheer fabric on top of it for color shifting purposes. And that way also the light can come through here instead of having to go through a sheer fabric where you might be able to see the wiring. But that's my plans. I really need to get going after I feed the kitties because they are really wanting some food right now. Finally getting to work with the actual material. Oops, made it so you couldn't see. There you go. Now, I have no idea how much of my lining fabric I have, and I kind of guesstimated how much of my fashion fabric I would need, so I'm trying my best to make sure that all of the pieces can fit as closely together as possible. I'm keeping my half inch seam allowance, because at this point that's just what I'm used to and I'm afraid of change. So there's that. 
So I'm going to trace out each piece onto my lining fabric and cut it out. For the lining fabric, I'm not too concerned. I don't mind if I don't have enough for the skirt, but I really am worried that I will not have enough for the fashion fabric. So what I wound up doing is actually using my lining fabric as my pattern pieces so that I could get them as close to each other as possible and I wouldn't have to stop and measure all of my seam allowances and hope that I got a good measurement. Now, I know you see that wrinkle in the middle of the fabric. I did my best to kind of spread that out and yes, I know I should have ironed it beforehand, but I swear I'll do it in a minute. See, there you go, ironing my pieces. I'm such a good person. Now, because I ironed my pieces after I cut them out, they don't exactly fit together perfectly. Um, and honestly, I was going to be too afraid to just let them sit anyway. So I'm going to actually baste the pieces together just by using some visible thread that I can just sew around the edges, which my director was having a whole lot of fun with. And once everything's basted together, I can use them as one piece each and sew them together to make my bodice. So it's Valentine's Day and I have, well, exactly halfway through February. Um, and I have just finished making, sewing together the bodice. I forgot that I was going to make the bottom parts a little tighter. So I think it's okay though, because I realized that the hips is gonna go over the skirt, which is gonna have some volume in it. So I'm actually gonna want some space in the bottom part. So hopefully it won't come back to bite me in the butt. We'll see. I'm going to, it's really late right now, so I'm going to iron it tomorrow and then I have just received the boning in the mail because I wound up buying the metal boning after all. So I need to add the boning and then I need to cut out the skirt, sew the skirt, and put it all, I think, um, I had been trying to decide on how I was going to attach the over layer piece um, if I was going to sew it onto the dress or if I was going to make it a separate piece. But I was thinking about it, if I make the bodice and the skirt separate, like the Cinderella dress and a lot of Victorian dresses seem to be a skirt and then a separate bodice, then I can make the overdress into like a robe that ties in the front and where it ties in the front I can put that under the bodice of the blue part of the underdress um, so you won't be able to see the tie which is really what I was wanting to avoid. So I think that is what I'm going to wind up doing which means that this bodice is going to be a separate piece so I have to finish it off as though it is a separate piece with um bias tape and all that edging stuff. But all that's gonna be tomorrow, problem, not today. I need to go to bed because I got work tomorrow. February 15th and I have ironed my bodice. The next steps, I also, I actually accidentally did this off camera. Um, I went ahead and sewed the inch over and I made a mistake. So I added an inch and a half to the back pieces for me to be able to fold it over and create a little bit of extra bulk for the grommets to sit in. Um, Cause I've had issue before where the grommets come out and um, I decided to have the half inch that I would normally have as my seam allowance plus an inch. So I folded over the half inch and sewed that down so that I had the the uh, half inch sewn down. And then I folded over the inch and sewed that down. But if you can see here, I don't have any room now. It's very hard to see the actual like lines so there's a line there and there's a line there of sewing 
which means that the fabric is, the half inch fabric is folded over here. I don't have enough room for grommets. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna fix that. I did try to um, pick the stitching out of the half inch part, but I guess for whatever reason, I can't do it. Like it is not coming out. So I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that. But anyway, the next step on the bodice is hand stitching because I need to sew in the boning channels um, and I don't want them to show through to this side. I don't want the lines of the boning channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side because I can do hand sewing at work. I think I'm going to try to at least cut out the fabric for the skirt. So while I was at work, I actually made my pattern for my um, skirt, at least the smaller version of it in my build book. And there was quite a lot of math involved in it because I had to figure out the sizes of each of the darts and they aren't exactly the same size. And then apparently there's not a center back seam because the center back is here, but the seam is over here. So I had to figure out what the difference was between the two. It was a whole lot of math, but I think I have it down pat. This is actually the third time I'm making this particular skirt because I, well, kind of. I mean, I made it for Cinderella which is considered the first time, even though I made it like eight times for Cinderella. And then, but I made it weirdly. Um, when I made it for Cinderella, I did it by percentages of increase. The second time I did it is for the brown dress that I made for the Evie Maid, but when I was trying to put the pleats together, they weren't sitting exactly where they were supposed to. I had to wind up putting the pocket into a different scene because it wasn't sitting where it was supposed to and it was a whole thing so i'm hoping third time's a charm and that i'm actually going to do it correctly this time with all of the math and stuff so let's see how it goes so apparently i do not have room enough to actually cut these pieces out in my house so i got to go through the process of measuring out how long I wanted my pieces and then trying to get them as straight as possible so I could get a straight line. Unfortunately, when it was put on the roll, it wasn't exactly folded in half, so you know, the usual crease that you get in your fabric was not very helpful to me, but I think I got it as straight as I could. I used my straight ruler and my rotary cutter to get Again, as straight a line as I possibly could. Unfortunately, I don't know, maybe my rotary cutter isn't that sharp because I had to go through it a few times before I actually got all of the fabric. But I did the best I could. The piece that I actually recorded myself cutting out is actually one of the back pieces. So it's a rectangle. I just measured out the width of it, and now I have to measure out to make sure that my length is good as well. So I'm just measuring the edges, and I will once again try to get it as straight as possible at where I need the length to be, and cut it out as straight as possible. This was honestly very annoying. But don't get me wrong, the other pieces were just as irritating. With them, I had to measure out the longer straight side, measure out the waist that I was going to use, figure out what angle I wanted the other edge to be, measure that out, and then either draw a straight line or a curved line at the bottom, whichever it called for, and also add seam allowances, which I forgot to add to my back pieces. So actually, the back pieces are a little bit smaller than they were supposed to be, but I don't think it's really noticeable. And since I can't stick to anything for long, switched back over to the bodice, I went ahead and pinked the edges 
so that when I added the boning channels, the edges would be underneath but wouldn't fray too much. And then I just used some bias tape for boning channels. Making sure that the center fold of the bias tape lined up as much as I could with the seam of the bodice, which was quite the interesting challenge. And my editor and producer were very interested in it. And then I went ahead and fell down the bias tape on either side, which, let me tell you, that took forever, because I was being really careful not to grab the fashion layer, only grab the lining, and I also wanted it to be nice and pretty, so. Then I went ahead and stitched in the ditch of the bodice, just to grab the center of that bias tape, and that will make me two boning channels. February 17th, I was able to get most of the boning channels onto the bodice yesterday, um, and I was able to cut out all of the pieces for the skirt. So today I plan on finishing putting the channels in and then hopefully sewing the skirt together. I'm still waiting for the fabric for the overskirt. I think maybe that won't come until Wednesday. So I need to, if I can get the base bodice done, then perhaps I can start working on the charms to add to the the dress, the base gown, and then also work on possibly the draping of the over bodice because that's probably going to take me several days to figure out even how to do that, let alone to actually do it. That's my update for today. So I'm going to get started because I am falling behind, unsurprisingly. Also, don't worry you guys, I was able to remove that back piece that I was complaining about earlier and I decided just to bind it with some bias tape, which will also conveniently make me another boning channel. It's a good thing I got a lot of this bias tape because I used it to bind both the top and bottom of the bodice. Right now I'm just working on the top though. I need to know how long to make these bones. So I measured out my boning channels, went ahead and measured on my metal bones. Now I, whenever I use my measuring tape, do not include the one inch mark. And then I use my metal shears to very carefully clip off the corners and make these bones not so sharp. And now to very carefully attempt to bind the bottom of the bodice without breaking too many of my needles. Well, I just broke my last sewing needle. I was trying to be really careful around the bones, but I wasn't careful enough, apparently. And it's Sunday, February 18th, so two hours before the shops open for me to go get more sewing needles. And there's really nothing, I mean, I could work on some other stuff, but not really. Like, I'm not sure how I want to work on the other stuff. I need to put grommets in here, but I forgot to get grommets at the store yesterday, so good thing I have to go back. I can, of course, hand sew um, this down, which I probably will wind up doing, but I kind of am bored of being at my house. So I think I'm going to go hang out at Starbucks for a little bit just to sew some of this on while I wait for the store to open. And here we see in the wild that awkward human trying to film without being noticed. Why does Michaels have to have my aesthetic when I can't afford it? So unfair. For some reason, from this point on, my film decided to start looking like some sort of stop motion thing. So that's a thing. But anyway, here I am just felling down the bias tape because I didn't want to worry about it anymore. And then on the edges, I'm marking out the where I want the grommets to go. And then I'm going to use my awl that I bought the third time, because I can't find my other two, and poke a hole through just to make it as big as I can. And then something that I like to do, not really sure if this is the correct thing to do, is to actually put my grommet onto my awl 
as soon as I get to that point, hold on, I have to get everything out. Put my grommet onto my awl and then use my awl to work my grommet into place. Now, these are cheap grommets, so I think a couple of them did get a little bit scratched up in doing this. So if you're going to try this method, just be aware you might scratch up your grommets. And then I stamped them together using a regular hammer, not a correct hammer for this process, but you know what? I couldn't find my good hammer, so there we go. I just woke up. I look like a crazy person. It's 6 o'clock in the morning on the 19th, and I'm so upset. I finished my corset yesterday. And then I tried it on, and the metal boning just looked so bad. It didn't let the shape come out in the corset, um, and it didn't do anything that I wanted it to. And then the velvet ribbon was pretty. It's a pretty idea, but since it's not velvet on both sides, it kind of looks ugly when it's actually tied up because I can't like force it to be velvet whenever I need it to be. So I need a new ribbon, which that's not gonna be, that's a future project. I don't have to have that anytime soon. Um, and then I also need to, I think what I'm gonna do is take out the stitching on the side take out the bone and then replace it with probably the plastic bones that was in the mock-up. Because even though they don't hold the girls up that well, they also don't crush me and make the corset look horrible. So we're gonna put the um, zip ties in instead of the metal boning that I spent a bunch of money on. Okay, after much wallowing, I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip out these bias tape boning channels and use the metal bones just to measure out how long I want these plastic bones to be. I think I could have probably bought some better plastic boning, but I was kind of on a time crunch, didn't have enough time, so I just used these zip ties, which didn't do all that much, but hey, it's something. And then I went ahead and felled everything back together. It's not the best looking fix, but it is what it is. All right, so I decided to try on the bodice before I finished the boning channels again. Um, the plastic bone looks so much better than the metal bone. With the metal bone, like this was not having any shape whatsoever. It was just kind of crushing me. Um, I was a little afraid that the plastic bone would not be strong enough for my bust area but it seems to be working just fine. The only problem now is that since I forgot to remove this excess in the front here, it's kind of doing this wibbly wobbly thing. That's also because of the bias tape I put in the bottom. There's so much bolt right there that it doesn't want to lay flat or anything. I'm hoping that the skirt, putting on the skirt underneath it, will give it enough of a volume at that area that it won't be too noticeable. If not, I will figure it out when I get there. I almost forgot about the skirt. Ugh, gotta sew that together too. So I just realized I have no idea how this skirt is supposed to close. So there's a waistband that closes around the waist, of course, but I don't see anywhere where it says that the skirt is supposed to remain open for the closure. So I'm a little confused. All right, I figured it out. I don't know how well you can see this, but this line right here is where it's saying the skirt is supposed to remain left open uh, for a placard. And then the pleat would conceal that. I'm not really sure how that would work. I'll figure it out when I get to it. But the problem is, of course, that they have it in a seam because their fabric wasn't as wide as mine. So they actually have one, two, 
probably five, I'm guessing, um, sections of fabric just in the back where I only did one whole section of fabric in the back. So I'm trying to decide now, do I want to cut open the fabric just on one side so that it comes down here and has that opening where it's supposed to have it? Or do I want to just move it over here and make my life easier? The problem with moving it over here is there's probably a reason it's on a straight line rather than it would be on a diagonal line here and you know the diagonal lines always stretch more. So I'm not sure if that would be a problem. The other issue I'm seeing is that this one, the pleat goes over this way whereas this one the pleat goes over this way and I'm not sure how that would affect things. I'm not even sure how the whole pleat hiding concealment is done in the first place but I don't know. I think I'm gonna move it over here just to make my life easier. I don't want to cut into the fabric and then not be able to fix it if I hate it. So I think just best to move it over here and not worry about it. And after all that, I actually decided to put it in the center back seam, which is also a straight seam, and I can't believe I didn't think of it earlier. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure out the pleating on this dress. Now, these days, a pleated dress is pretty easy because every pleat is the same distance, and you just have to measure out the same distance. But apparently, in the Victorian times, it was not that way. They pleated it so that the front was more flat and the back was more voluminous, which is why I like this skirt in the first place. But oh my gosh, it was so hard to figure out where these pleats went. I think I had to redo it like three or four times before I was happy with it, and I still think I got some of the pleats in the wrong place. But I just pinned them together, and then I will go ahead and sew them in place later. Just making sure that nothing gets moved around. I was trying, and I thought I had done a good job of making sure nothing got folded over. Then I added a waistband, folded over this little half inch piece, and then I felled that to the skirt. And I also hand sewed a little rolled hem at the bottom, mainly because I think rolled hem fits are magic and I can't figure them out. So there we go. All right, so the dress is done. Well, it's mostly done. I have not actually put a closure in the skirt because I'm not sure I might want to actually attach the skirt and the bodice to each other right now. They're free floating, but I might decide that it's just best to attach them together. I haven't quite decided yet, so I haven't put the closure in the back. But that can be a later problem. I wish I had time to do a better, uh, better reveal of it. But at the moment, this is the best I can do. I'm really happy with it. I still haven't figured out how exactly I want to deal with this front buckling. I'm thinking if I don't attach it to the skirt, which I am thinking about doing, um, I will probably at least put some hooks and eyes in the front so it kind of sits down on the skirt more. And then I am really happy with the skirt. Uh, I like the length of it. I wish it was just a tad bit longer because unfortunately I made it just barely short enough that you can see my feet. So that means I have to find a good pair of shoes to wear with it and I was hoping not to have to. I was hoping to be able to wear some nice, comfortable combats for the ball, but it is what it is. There's also one problem with, I don't know that you can see it, one of the pleats got turned over when I was sewing it down, so that's a little bit messy. But other than that, I am really happy with it. I wish there was a bit more volume. I went ahead and put on I'm sorry, I'm going to reveal what's under my skirts. I went ahead and put on a um, uh, kind of bridal A-line uh, underskirt to give it a little bit more volume, but 
it doesn't have the volume that would be in a Victorian skirt. So I'm thinking about how I might be able to get a little bit more volume in this. I could put on the Cinderella uh, cage skirt that I have that keeps falling apart, but I think it might be a little too big. Not for the skirt. I think the skirt would go over it just fine, but this ball, I guess, is supposed to be in a pretty small area. So they've already said that they don't want people wearing any wings or anything like that, which I think is more so for the sake of like not poking anyone's eyes out. But I also think that they probably won't want people walking around in these huge cage skirts at the ball. But right now, I'm happy with how it looks and I am ready to move on to the next steps of this gown. If you're interested to see how I spruce up this gown to make it just that little bit of extra moon and myth, then please subscribe so you can see the next video that's going to come out will hopefully be the uh, rest of this gown. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them down below and I will do my best to respond to anything that I can. I just realized I need a necklace to go with this gown. Hmm. Have to figure that one out. But for now, I'll have to sign off and I'll see you in the next video.